welcome to Unforgettable 3. Directly from somewhere in the South Pacific, we want to invite you for the boat tour on the Northwind 435. Check it out! Unforgettable 3 is a North Wind 435, built in Spain in the 90s. She is 43 feet long, 12 feet wide and 6 feet draft, and weights 14 tons. She was designed by Bill Dixon, featuring a deck saloon that makes the boat very clear and bigger inside, a flush deck that makes it easier to walk around and a center cockpit that makes us feel nicely sheltered and the motion is more smooth. A great boat for oceanic voyages. By the way, she already has many ocean crossings in her resume. Let's get started with the fundamentals. Unforgettable 3, it's a sloop, and we have a, a jib on the a rolling furler at 125%, 125%, which is a decent size for the kind of sailing we've been doing. We also have the capability of hoisting a sty sail. This is this tie here we can attach to that metal piece and hoist another sail and we have a furling main sail. There are lots of considerations about the furling main. I wasn't a really really a big fan but now after sailing nearly 8,000 miles of it I can't say that I don't hate it. I still don't love it. It's a kind of love and hate situation but I learned it with it and now I got to use it. So there are advantages. We can unfro and furl it really quick, which is really uh, good and easy. It doesn't have all the performance that uh, a full button sail has, but there's always a compromise. Right now, I'm, I'm happy with it. We have a nice sail. It's a tafeta and well built, very light. This boat has a very powerful rigging, it's very strong, uh, oversized and there's a running size also for a, for a beat, for an upwind. This is a Selden mast, it's uh, 18 meters high, something like 55 foot and two sets of spreaders. We have a, a spinnaker pole and although we don't have a spinnaker, we use it quite often to pull out the jib when they are downwind. It works really good, especially if the wind is over 20 knots, this boat sails beautifully with it. Each side of the mast we keep it with a 46 uh, Lumor winch, so really good to, to hoist whatever you want, like the halyards or the dinghy. Now I feel like this boat has a heavy displacement and sails really good if the wind's on the beam. On a bit it sails good as well. It's not so great going downwind because it's a heavy boat, it doesn't have a huge, uh, a very long water line and it rolls a bit. The, so I would say the strong points is uh, beam reach, upwind, and if it's going downwind, we need a lot of wind, over 20 knots to perform beautifully. Uh, we're looking for a, a spinnaker, maybe we an addition to our set in the future, but right now we don't have it. I also like the fact that the, the mast has steps all the way to the top. It makes it a lot easier to climb the mast. Maybe that's why I climb the mast so often. Sometimes I just go to the top just to check things around with no, actually not much to do but the steps really really make life easier. One last aspect of this rigging that I'd like to mention is that we can adjust here the, the tension from the backstay so whenever we need to bring a bit on a beat or slack it very easy you just winch it and that's a really nice feature. Here in the cockpit, I really love like the these big 52 Lumer winches. Uh, they are so powerful and uh, make it really easy to, to control the jib. A spare one 
winch here, not self-tailing. We use it for different kind of things. You can like uh, assist on, uh, on the style sail or even controlling the mainsail. So it's very handy to have. Here we control the mainsail. So we have the traveler and here we, we control the, the main sheet. In overall, I can say that this is a very gentle boat. It has treated as well so far. I hope we keep it like that. Very handy. We can control the outhaul. We can throw and unthrow the main, uh, the vang, and that halyard that goes on the point of the boom. I forgot the name in English. I don't know if there's a name for it. So if you know, please leave it in the comments. And very handy. We use this small winch here to control it, most of it. Sometimes the outhaul I use on the big winches and yeah man life is easier with this helm wise this boat has not like a huge wheel but i never felt too heavy i never had to struggle too much it has always been gentle it's a steering quadrant and a fully skeg rudder it has a long keel, keel almost three meters and uh with metal on it and steel and not long ago we hit a coral today the wind is a little bit weaker and yeah, it's <gasps> the, the boat shook quite a bit, but everything is fine, so uh, very, very sturdy. Talking a bit about the ground tackle, we are here very well anchored with our Rockna anchor, it's like 25 kilos and we really really love this anchor this is not an advertisement but as far as we ha we've had it like it, it holds really good in every kind of soil like we've got like pretty strong winds and uh, waves actually that are the worst on the anchorages and it always holds it pretty good along with the anchor we have 200 feet of chain eight millimeters what is good because we can anchor in different uh, depths and we can always have a good scope we also have a lot of rope, and but we have never used it actually. We have an electric windlass, a quick brand. We always anchor with a bridle, so we remove the pressure from the windlass. And so just to summarize, we have like a 25 kilo Rockna anchor, 200 feet chain that holds pretty much our 14 ton boat. This boat has very nice storage here outside. We have two lockers, one in the bow and one in the back. This one we keep like fenders, diving gear, some extra water gallons. We also have the dock lines here and it's really easy to get them when we need, like the fenders and the lines. This is the after locker. It's really big, but the thing is, it's nearly fully loaded with jerry cans. We have like uh, 13 five gallon jerry cans. It also has some spare parts, generator, hoses, wood planks. So hardware, heavy stuff and jerry cans are here. Here on the platform, we have a locker for two 20 pounds propane tanks. They stay here, right uh, on the bow of the boat, away from everything else. This small platform is, is also really good. We shower here pretty much every day. One other thing that makes this boat really cruiser friendly uh, is this Davids and this arch. We hoist our dinghy here every night. Also, this structure holds solar panel, big one, 320 watts. Uh, this is a main source of power and also the wind generator. Welcome to the cabin, guys. This is the interior of our boat and I really love it because it's so big, like it has so much room and it's very clear because of the deck saloon, so it makes it really clear. There's a lot of hatches, it's very airy. This version of the Northwind has this big saloon, three cabins, two heads, a galley and a navy station. What I like about this saloon is that there are two tables. The tables are apart from the middle of the boat, so you can walk here easily. We have no many lockers on the walls, so it makes it bigger, wider. These tables, they also open, so you can make a bigger table, like this. And that you have a huge table. And the other one is the same thing. You can even like open both of them and just make like... 
and just make like a huge thing. We have never used like that. We had never had so many people on the boat. Well, maybe we had, but not here inside having food. So yeah, we never used this big. You can also bring them lower or higher. You can make like a coffee table or we usually put it down like, so when we want to watch a movie or things like that, we just can lay down just feel more comfortable. Underneath the couches we have two stainless steel tanks for water so it's like 300 liters each and I can also like use this bowl that I've bought that's really good for editing videos so I just can sit here and do all my job here. And clock the way. Yeah and clock the way. When I bought it I thought it would go through the doors I didn't realize it wouldn't so now we just keep it like here in the our, corner. Our third crew member. Yes, our third crew member. Here is the front cabin. It's a V-berth. It's very comfortable for a couple. It's a quite big bed. And there's something interesting also. You can remove this part and you can have like two single beds. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is also this head. And if you close this door, you just make like a room with a head and you have all your privacy. For you guys that are wondering, who are we? We've been sailing the world for the past 40 years. We left Brazil and then sailed all the way to Caribbean. And now we are in French Polynesia. We just crossed the Pacific Ocean a few months ago. And we are in our third boat. This is a forgettable three. So if you want to know more about uh, our other boats, soon we will release a comparison of the three boats. I think it would be really nice. And we will understand why we are in our third boat in four years. We've been doing videos for the past three years now. And if you are curious, just browse through our YouTube channel. You will find like a playlist with English subtitles. There's some nice stuff in there. And from now on, we're going to start doing like full English episodes once a week. So tag along. Here in the aft, we have two cabins. There is like uh, these bunk beds that we always use as storage unless we have crew. I really love this room actually. And to sleep here is not bad at all because you have like a nice hatch. It's very airy, it's clear. And we also have like, yeah, more storage. And this is our cabin. This is the captain's cabin. Really like the bed. It's big, it's comfortable for the two of us. Well, more for me than for Diego because I sleep on this side and he sleeps on that side. Uh, he says I don't have maturity enough to sleep on this side, so that's good for me. I just sleep here and I can go out and in all the time easier. I don't have to go through somebody. And also like it's more airy here than on the corner. That's why I love you, babe. Thank you. <laughs> but apart from that, like the, the cabin is nice. We have like huge wardrobes. Well, for someone that lives on a boat, this is a huge wardrobe, believe me. Like, not for a house, maybe. I keep all my clothes here. And of course, Diego got the smaller wardrobe. And I'm not sure if I'm going to show you because I'm sure it's really messy, but... No, it looks perfect. Really? Show okay, it, I like so challenge you. This is Diego's. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. Yeah, not that bad. In this cabin, there is a head, what's pretty sweet. There's a big mirror. We have like a cold and warm water at the boat. But for use to use the warm water, we have to turn on the engine. So it's not all the time. Most of the time, actually, it's cold. Finally, here's the galley. That's a nice galley. We have like lots of room uh, to cook, to wash the dishes, to do whatever we need. We have two sinks. They are pretty useful. We have one pressured water tap and the another foot pump. That's also nice, in case one doesn't work, we can use the other one. Here's the oven, the stove, it's pretty. It's just like all the other boats, it moves. When the boat moves, it swings. Here there are two fridges. We actually most of the time only use one because of battery. We don't want to use so much energy. We have a small freezer inside, but it's very handy also if you can have a freezer on a boat. And I think every cruiser know like how nice it is to have ice sometimes, so you just can keep small like trays of ice but that's pretty good lots of storage here when we keep like dishes food lots of other things here we also have like lots of storage for food we keep like most of dry food here one thing that can be a deal breaker when you buy in a boat is the engine and this boat when you when you saw it first it's a it was a brand new yammer 54 horsepower uh, very low hours and still like that 
Well, we do our best to keep it very clean and running smoothly. 54 horsepower, you can keep, uh, you can take us to seven knots on the engine if you need to. I run it on uh, 2,300 RPM, and that gives uh, six knots, 6.5 knots, depending on the condition. And if you really want to push it, I can make it seven knots running over 2,600, 2,700. But I don't like to go uh, over that. So on cruising speed, 2300 RPM, it uh, takes like one gallon per hour, if that much. We have 420 liters of diesel in our tanks. This is the nav station, my favorite spot on the boat. All the, the breakers are here, the electric switch, and I have access to the most of electronics here. So I can even use the charge plotter here. I can uh, control the autopilot, use the radio, check the voltage on the batteries, check the tanks and also there's uh, lots of documents and charts and things I started underneath and it's actually made for open a full-size uh, paper chart and so that holds pretty much all my mess and I drive Georgia crazy with it but I'm trying to keep it, it's not too bad today talking about electronics, this boat is equipped with a uh, Charge plotter, Raymarine, radar, AIS, uh, wind station, autopilot, and a VHF radio. Also have SSB radio, and to be honest, we don't use it that much. Mostly use it a uh, Garmin InReach satellite communicator, but also we have a weather fax. Yeah, that's old stuff, but still working, still good condition. If you want to buy, let me know, drop a message. Eper, well, you can see. Lots of lots of stuff happening here. This is the this is the core of this boat, right? I wanna run away with you. Tell me that you wanna to just wanna be alone with you. Has been uh, eight thousand miles on this boat and I can say I'm really happy. It has uh, filled the purpose we bought it. It's really an offshore voyager and I'm stoked. I, I see I, I can see ourselves for a long time sailing this boat. Yeah, we've had really nice moments aboard Unforgettable 3 and one thing that I also, I didn't mention but I really like about it is that we can receive a lot of people here and we've had done it and it's been really nice to know many amazing people that crewed with us, that we met in different places, so yeah, and we also felt like we own you guys this tour, the you that's been watching our channel for a while now, and we hadn't done like a proper tour, so this was a nice opportunity. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to support our production, if you like our videos, please consider to become a patron. A big thanks to our Brazilian community who follow and support us for these last three years. Muito obrigado, turma. We love you. We care a lot about you guys. And thanks for bringing us here. Remember to subscribe if you're new here. And if you can give a thumbs up to this video, it would be really cool. Leave us a comment telling what you think about the Northwind 435. It's not a famous boat on America, but a legendary boat on uh, Europe. Yeah. So, thank you very much. See you next week. Bye-bye. We want to invite you for the boat tour on the Northwind 435. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs>